compatible. C O M P A T I B. No, <laughs> I don't know. I gotta see it. What's going on, you guys? Hi, Sarah. Hi, Damien. Welcome. How's your Monday going? Adolfo, what's up? Do we find out, is the post office for sure closed today? Brady says, hi, Wit. What about me? Oh, he said hi before. <laughs> What's up, Braid? Artisanal Lab. Hello from North Carolina. What's up? Hi from Holland, Pennsylvania. Bill, what's going on, man? Richard Hartman. Hi, David. Got a solid crew going already. Come on, why don't the comments show up? There we go. Howdy from Kentucky, what's up, Mark? Dale Leather from UK Top Show. Hello from Ukraine. All right, guys, I'm, work I'm, I'm just still plugging away on fat stacks of wallets all day. <laughs> I've been doing it, I mean, the funny thing is, you might think I've been doing the same thing for a long time. I kind of have, but I've been working in it. I've been working on these wallets in small increments, like just a couple hours at a time, if that. Sometimes it's even less. Um, but I'm getting to it, cranking away. Just have so much other stuff coming into play. It's it's just hard to stay on task when you're wearing a lot of hats, metaphorical hats. Be looking at anything crazy because we're all watching. <laughs> so, um, I was thinking about it just a few minutes ago. I I had been uh, I started burnishing these 54s. This is the one that actually got burnished, um, or just slicked down. I guess you should say. I don't I don't know if burnish technically implies that. No, this is burnished. This is still considered burnished. I just didn't do like the beeswax and the saddle soap. This is just slicked down with water. But um, I'm trying to get a little focus on that. Anyway, I started burnishing these, um, but I haven't stitched them yet. But there's a reason for that. I, I I mean, I've done it both ways before. You can You can do it both ways. But I found that it's a lot safer to do your edges before you sew or stitch. Um, this, this applies to hand stitching as well, but, um, and I'm not talking about the full burnishing process, but at least sanding, it always, uh, it's, it's smart to get a nice flat surface before you start stitching, because if you're using like some pricking irons or if you're just sewing on the machine and uh, you're going straight down, well, if the, if the leather's a little bit uneven, then you might be closer to the edge than you want on the back side, or it might even, um, the, the, the pricking irons or the needle might actually come out and uh, be off the edge, you know, depending on how crooked or straight your uh, leather is. So I like to just um, glue the, the pieces together and then just get a really, really nice flat edge um, before I start sewing because uh, that way you know you're just going to go straight down in and the same distance that you're stitching from the top uh, is where it's going to come out on the bottom. Um, so 
Yeah, sand your edges before you stitch. Just a little uh, insider tip. Please, Russian speak. I don't speak Russian, sorry. If I ever learn, I'll do a live stream in Russian. Good tip. Hello from KB Leather. Have you ever made hats? Nope. Don't know how to make hats. That tool, you're, like a leather hat? <laughs> I don't know about a leather hat. Maybe if I ever come across some beaver wool felt. <laughs> that tool you're using right now is kicking my butt. Not sure what I'm doing wrong. Um, are you talking about this one? This is just a simple uh, edger from Tandy. Um, what's what's going wrong with it though for you? Because there's a few things that can help. Um, some of you know, I, I kind of go back and forth. I'm a lefty, I'm a southpaw, so I actually use this tool wrong, meaning I'm using um, the uh, this little, I don't know what you want to call that. It's not really a blade, but this little uh, chisel right here has a sharp side to it so that as you're uh, going down your edge, it actually pulls up some leather and like digs a groove into it. Um, like I'll just do an example here for you. This is with my right hand using it properly. And as you go down, it's actually pulling leather up. Um, you can see like leather coming off there. So that's the proper way to use these. Um, I never got used to using it that way just because I'm right-handed or cause I'm left-handed, but I also just kind of enjoyed the way that it works with my left hand as well, because you're using the backside of it. So instead of like cutting into the leather, you're just kind of, uh, indenting, you know, you're just kind of like carving a, uh, a little groove in there. So it's not as significant, the groove, as it would be if you're using the side with the little blade with the cutter on it. But it works really well and it gives you a nice little groove for the stitch to sit into. And it's not as risky. So if you're, if you're going down on the edge like this, um, and let's just say you kind of come off the edge and go into your leather into a place that you don't want, then it's much safer if you're not actually cutting the leather, if you're just kind of marking it. That way you can kind of buff it out and you're good to go. So anyway, it's just a little bit, bit of a safer uh, process, I guess. Um, Whitney looks very happy. <laughs> is that sarcastic? <laughs> she is very happy. I'm happy. Aren't you? I'm happy, I'm just concentrating. Say hello to my wife, Xenia, please. Hi, Xenia. I hope I'm saying that right. Bought me a mighty wonder. Will dies click out okay from backside from far left and right side pocket? Um, I'm not sure if I know what you mean by that totally. Let me read that again. Uh, will the dies click out okay from the backside for left and right side pockets? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure what you mean by that. Um, if you're talking about the actual cutting surface of the Mighty Wonder, you can put your dies anywhere on the cutting surface that you need to, and it should be good. Um, I'm wondering if maybe your dies have, it's one of the dies where you have all the pieces on the same piece of wood, and maybe you're getting a corner that's not cutting as well. That's why I really like the individual dies as opposed to one. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Hi. <laughs> I know, I'm, look, I, just to save you some time and some heartache, it's not gonna be for a long time. I'm trying to do everything I can with every spare minute of my day to uh, get caught up on our stock, on our current stock, so I'm not gonna be able to really get experimental and try new fun things uh, for a while. I'm probably, I mean, I don't know. This is the craziest time in our work because uh, we're just getting ready for Christmas. Things, are, things always pick up, our orders pick up. It's just a hectic time. So I might not be able to get experimental and try new fun things for a while. So hair on hides are coming, but it might not be for a while. Just want to save you some, uh, save you some heartache there. Um, let's see here. What am I missing? Ask Whitney to give everyone a wave. <laughs> She's gone. Hi, from Indy, your sewing machine. What did cook at before that perchy? <laughs> I'm sorry, I have no idea what that says. <laughs> I'm guessing there were some typos in there. Hi from Indy, your sewing machine. What did kook at before that perchy? 
<laughs> yeah, sorry, I got nothing. I have no idea. <laughs> Try typing that one again. Should make a proper chair or stool for Whitney. <laughs> she has a good stool. I don't know why you're sitting I want, there. I want the heater. That, she, she's I'm sitting cold. on a heater and it is kind of chilly in here, so. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Paul J wants you to give a wave to everyone. <laughs> That's a good wave. When you wipe after using the... Oh my gosh, what are you I'm not going to answer that. Oh man, i got to read these before I start saying them. I think he's asking if you cut flesh side up with the clicker dies. Oh yeah, you can. I probably wouldn't because when you use a die, it actually kind of rounds the corners for you um, the same way like an edger would do. So I prefer to cut it from the top just because it gives you a nice little beveled edge. But it's up to you. You could definitely do that. It should work. There's no reason it shouldn't. I really like your blogs. Thanks even getting my hubby to watch. Leather Guild tonight in St. Paul. Right on. That's, that's really cool. Thanks, Teresa. Crazy stuff tonight. Whitney Wave. <laughs> oh, Whitney Wave. Uh, yeah, she already did. You missed it. You're never going to get it again. Sorry. You got to pay extra for that. <laughs> I don't understand English. I'm so sorry. I uh, don't know what to do about that. I'll help you learn English. Where do you get your dyes? Um, I get them from a place called National Dye Incorporated. Uh, doesn't have a website. I just email him. And I, I've put his email in multiple links. In fact, it's down below in the description right now. National Dye Incorporated. Um, thanks so much. You suggest left hand and right hand dyes. What things do you look for in a sewing machine? Boy, I blew the first post. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's all right, Kevin. I won't hold it against you. Um, I have a video. You just have to go back a few months, probably, in our um, YouTube videos. I have one that says what to look for when buying an industrial sewing machine. It's all there, all laid out. All right, I got to get sewing. I, my bobbin's running really low, and I hate doing this because I, I don't want to just waste a bunch of thread that's on the bobbin now. But it's always risky to start something when you know your bobbin's getting low. I really prefer to just start out with a new bobbin. I think you bought out all the rest at Brown Leather. I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> um, we buy two, we buy Russet and we buy Buck Brown. Uh, if you're talking about Buck Brown, I don't know. We, Wicked and Craig stays on top of it. Like they'll, they'll tan it for you if they don't have it. So it's usually like a two week turnaround. If you ask them to split it and uh, finish the backside and everything, but <laughs> set your heater. But yeah, I mean, if, the, if they have it on the shelves, they'll send it out just within a couple days. But they'll always whip it up for you if, you, if, you know, if they're out of stock. It's just usually a little bit of a wait time. Also, District Leather Supply, are they out of stock? Have you checked there? They sell it. Talked about using Illustrator. What version is best to use? Looks like there were several. Oh, really? I don't know. Um, I just, I use Adobe Illustrator. The current version, I'm on their subscription you know, the cloud based, whatever subscription. So it like, it just always updates to the new one. Hello, Spider-Man. <laughs> <Hi. laughs> That's our guy from Russia. <laughs> I'm not sure why you're calling me Spider-Man, but I guess I'll take that as a compliment. I did get bit by a spider yesterday and I have been feeling pretty strong lately. <laughs> Are you using a servo motor and a reducer? Yes, sir, I am. Also, Herman Oak has good selection. Yeah, they do. Built my first wallet yesterday. Nice, congrats. That's really cool. Oh, look at this big bug that just fell off the machine while it was sewing. It's one of those things. Get out of here. I keep finding those. They're all there. That's what you get with the workshop in the mountains. You get weird bugs. They're in the house, though. Yeah, that's true. Well, the house is in the mountains, too. Same terms and conditions.
Any sewing injuries? That's from Brady. Not yet, man. That would be, if there were, it would probably be pretty severe because this needle has no mercy. It would go straight through your finger. But so far, nothing. And honestly, I'm not very safe. I need to practice better sewing machine safety precautions. But no, nothing yet. Putting your finger underneath the presser foot wouldn't help while the machine's on and my foot's on the pedal. <laughs> But I was actually, I was just trying to think if my finger's even big enough to get under that uh, presser foot. It is. Big enough? Smaller? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, it made sense to me, but it's not. How can I draw on the leather? Um, uh, like permanently draw or just to mark up during production? Uh, because Tandy has a really cool little like chalk marker kind of thing that goes on white and then just wipes off. Um, that would be pretty cool to use. I've always just used a scratch all to kind of make my marks. But if you're talking about like, what did you say, draw or paint? Draw. Yeah, I don't know. That's a new, maybe that's something only you are doing, which is so cool. Do it. Figure out a way that it works. Maybe use some like paint pens. I don't know. Make it work. I'm sure other people are doing it. See, I, you could do a little quick search and you'd probably find a ton of people doing it. Oh, there you go. Alexis has got your back. Um, I usually try to have our vlogs have like some kind of substance to them, like some kind of message or, um, you know, something that I'm actually teaching. This one isn't. I'm just going to try and work as much as I can while I've got you here. I just wanted to get something up today and hang out with you guys a little bit. But, um, yeah, I, in the future, we're going to have a lot more substance. In fact, I'll be filming a vlog today that will go up tomorrow that... It's going to be all about um, why, no, yeah, why makers should be using video to uh, promote their brand. It's going to be a good one. This is probably the last wallet I'm going to get on this bobbin. I don't want to risk it. Hey, I'm curious, just by a quick one word comment, how many of you are hand stitching versus how many of you are sewing on a machine? I'm just curious. I, I know that there are a lot of people who hand stitch now but would like to machine stitch because that's like the majority of the comments I get or questions are like, which one do I buy? But uh, I just, I'm just curious to see like the majority of the people that are here now, what you're doing right now. We got some hand, hand, machine, hand stitch, hand, so far mostly hand. Cool. Yeah, lots of hand stitching. Nice. Advice for all hand stitch. Cool, guys. That's awesome. So I guess second part of that question, would you, well, how do I word it? Is anyone looking to get into machine stitching or are you, do you prefer majority hand stitching? I mean, most people do a little bit of both. I think I just saw Jordan's comment. Both, glad your machine squeaks too, because <laughs> yes, yes, thank you, Jordan. I'm always like embarrassed to run this machine because I know I'm gonna get tons of questions or uh, comments, people being like, dude, you gotta oil your machine. <laughs> but I swear it's oiled up, I keep it real oiled. But um, 
yeah, it just, it's a squeeze. I think it has to do with the, like the angle of my belt down to the reducer. I think it might be like a little bit off, which I had to do because of where my oil pan is, but it's just always squeaked as it goes. So anyway, okay, so I gotta go back. We got a few people saying, okay, I gotta go back even further. Hold on now. You're a machine, get inspired by looking at your creations. Thank you. Machine, Juki 550, I do both, hybrid construction, machine, detail, hand, cool. Hand only because I can't afford the Juki yet, I feel ya. How many wallets could you make by day if you would just do hand stitching? That's a good question. Um, I remember back in the day I was only doing like one or two wallets a day when we were just hand stitching, so. Uh, I mean, if we like dedicated the entire day to just wallets, maybe I could have done like three or four, but. And we were laser cutting back then too, so a lot of it was still pretty automated. But just like straight up, if I was just to like cut a wallet out by hand from start to finish, you know, hand stitch and everything, I probably would have only been able to do a couple a day. It always makes me think something is wrong, but yeah, I think it has to do with the belt and the reducer. Yeah. I just found your vlog and have a lot to learn. Thanks for having you on. Thank you for having this channel. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being here. Just got a Cobra Class 4. Cool. That's a good machine. Changed my life, but for things that I want to look extra classy, I still hand stitch. I don't have enough traffic to justify getting a machine yet. Finally got, got a live stream. Cool. What's up, Kayla? See, that's interesting. Just to hear some of the perspective. Like, I think it's good that there are so many different opinions about this, but... Um, just to hear your, your comment, who said it? Um, oh, I can't find it now. Oh, okay. Bjorn workshop, Bjorn's workshop. Yeah, so it's interesting to me that you say if you want it to look extra classy, you'll go hand stitch. I totally get that. I think that some hand stitching can look really good, really good, real classy, but, um, I happen to really love the look of machine stitching. I was really impressed and, and just kind of excited with the prospect of um, getting my machine because I love the look of the machine stitch. Just a personal preference. I think it kind of like echoes back to the, um, you know, like really traditional type of uh, Western tack. And when I say traditional, I, I guess you gotta be careful with that because if you go back far enough, then of course it's all gonna be hand stitched. But, um, there's a lot of like old school saddle shops that are just stacked with Adlers and guys back there just clunking away on their machines. And uh, they put out really beautiful products and I've always loved the way it looks. And um, so anyway, that's kind of, I think that's what I got excited about was our, our, our products were starting to have that kind of feel, which is what I've always, um, you know, strived for. I've missed the last couple live streams. I was beginning to really miss it. Oh man, well I'm glad you're back, Terry. I didn't even do a, like a preemptive post about this one. I just kind of went live. So I'm glad you guys are here. 95 of you, cool. I'm just starting my leather work journey. Man, the comments disappeared, it's frustrating. I'm so inspired by your videos and your family. So cute, love the channel. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. That's Kayla. Big hello to you from Russia. We look after your creativity and dream to create beauty as well. Thank you so much. That's from Frenchman. Some of the old machines are still the best. Yeah, it's so true. Have you tried Sapichi Tanneries leather from Turkey? If yes, what are your thoughts? I've never tried that. Sorry. Doug, what is hand stitch with a weave? Yeah, I'm curious about that too. Man, we don't have Kim here today. Kim, she's the one that's always like, keeping up on me, making sure I don't miss anyone's comments. And she's like, she tells everyone to go like and share the live stream. <laughs> she's like, oh, she's on every single live stream. So when she's not, it's like, what? Where's Kim? We must have caught her at a bad time. Yeah, I'm from Turkey. I always buy from them. Cool. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not reading that one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you have to go back and read that one from Ron Jeremy. <laughs> Sketchy. I mean, if, it, if it's just some like creepy dude, yeah, but I have a feeling that it's like someone I know that's just messing with us. 
It's probably Brady. Is it Brady? <laughs> the only reason I know who Ron Jeremy is is because of my love for Sublime, and he used to sing about Ron Jeremy. Ron is a farmer. <laughs> All right, back to sewing. Enough of that. I saw you today. What? And Brady said, I wish it was me. <laughs> that was my first thought because we both went through our sublime, uh, our, our uh, love for sublime together. And so th there's just a couple songs where Bradley Noel mentions Ron Jeremy. I thought it would, I, I thought it was him. Makes me a little weirded out that he said he saw me today. Who did? Ron Jeremy. Putting in some creepy stuff on here. All right, we got this. I'm actually working this time, you guys. I've never, I'm never successful at actually working while live streaming. Huh? Yeah. How about you read them and answer? No, keep working. That's fun. <laughs> You're what? You think you get the day off because the post office is closed? You got to sew up all the wallets for me. Fair enough. This is what's weird about YouTube. I think you just touched the, what? There it is. I don't know how to get that. All right, should we block Ron Jeremy? What you did was not cool. What? What is he talking about? I'm definitely blocking him. How do we do it? There it is. Yeah. Um, that one? Get out of here, Ron. I don't need your weird stuff. He says he doesn't like what I did today, which is what, taking oh. the family to lunch? Oh. Careful! Oh, I just saw one about our kids. Our kids are napping, that's why we're both out here. This is rarefied silence in here. Yeah, it's not usually like this. I need to pull that garbage can closer. Keep throwing it on the ground. I think these, I'm sorry, my finger keeps getting in. Where's the? I, yeah, I always just do it from over here. Uh-oh. Babe. <laughs> I don't know what? how to get it back up. Oh, I reported him. Recording. Thanks, Jordan. Because that was weird. <laughs> Real weird. Have you done hand step? My, otter, my daughter Indy says hi to Indy. That's Aww, cool. Oh, how old's Indy? We Someone said block him. Do you make plastic dies? Uh-oh, I thought I blocked him. What, is he back? You oh, just deleted it. I just hit. Oh, Indy's 18. That's cool. Man, so that's a... You... I haven't heard of a lot of Indies. I yeah, love that. I haven't either. That's really cool. Woo! I don't know if you can <laughs> getting... sit by me with that heater. <laughs> I'm getting hot too. That is hot. again. I don't get it. Where's the, isn't this the camera? Is it cold there? Oh, impact guns. Hey, impact guns. It's pretty chilly. It warms up uh, about this time, but it's cold. I actually left the heater on all weekend while we were gone. We were out of town. I left it on 
could have been really bad because this did. place is like a tinder box, but we're all safe. And so when I got here this morning, it was actually pretty, pretty toasty, toasty in here. But it's cooling down for sure. Someone from the Netherlands said hi. Joanna. What model of Juki? I can't remember. 1508. N. Wow, you do remember. Mm -hmm. Or did you read it? No. It's because you've answered a few of those emails. Yeah. I don't know how to get the comments back up. <laughs> I just yeah, YouTube, like it. YouTube's uh, comment thing is really weird. It's, it's better on desktop if we had it going on desktop. Brandon, my next product's oh. gonna be hand stamped. Yeti what sleeve. It? Yeti sleeve? Like, like one a of those cooler? T but like oh, they have the smaller like a thermos. Ones. Cape Town. Does that mean hi? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, I'm sorry guys. I don't know how to get the comments back up. That's pretty cool. Impact guns is here. I haven't been. To, we, we haven't been in a while. We need to go. I I went there without you. Before. What? Not recently. Oh, yeah. One time you did. Uh, so, uh, I can't get them back up. I know. It's so annoying. This is what I'm telling you. I've complained about it every live stream, but the comments disappear. Okay, what did you ask again, Frenchman? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds funny. Frenchman? Glad to catch you guys live. It's a bit late this side in South Africa. Oh, man. You better go to bed. Now this Russian is just going to be pissed if he doesn't get an answer so I said to ask, oh, yeah. again. ask it again sorry the comments disappear i love your workshop thanks patrick haha <laughs> thanks i have a small side leather uh, leather side business but enjoy watching the videos while i'm here at work oh cool that's awesome we did it i did a video i wonder if you saw it i did a video a few months ago where i was uh coming in to shoot like once a week do you remember that for my lunch break i would go in and shoot Oh, yeah. And uh, I was going to Impact a lot. I haven't gone in a while. How long were we talking about Leathercraft? Never stayed. <laughs> he actually was doing leather when we first met. He was... I had just started. Yeah, one of the times he about blew me off because he wanted to make a wallet in his kitchen. I'm like, fine, I'll just come watch you. So I just sat and watched him. I didn't blow you off. You wanted to. No. No, it's not true. These are lies. It's true. First market next week. Cool. Oh, advice. Uh, Make sure you bring your square reader or your Shopify reader. And make sure you have good internet connection because mm -hmm. that was the number one problem we had at the Sundance one was we couldn't check anyone out because our phones weren't getting service up at Sundance. So make sure you got like buy one of those like LTE boxes or something. Got to yeah. get something down. We'll bring that next time. What else? Bring two people or three so you can switch out. Take a break. It says anywhere other than woodheads for tools. Any what? Guys in yeah. SA, anywhere other than Woodheads for tools? Um, are you talking about South Africa by chance? Because <laughs> I, I um, would suggest Chartermade. He makes some beautiful knives. I don't know if what tools you're looking for, but. How do you get them to go up and I can't? You've got to do it where the comments oh. are. The square's a lifesaver. Yeah, it is. It, it, if you have a Shopify website, the Shopify reader's even better. You said, Jared said. What? You have to work when the boss is right behind you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. I had to come no, on this really. live stream. He's not she getting She thinks it done. she's the boss, but. We I all am. know who's the boss. Yeah, me. We could take a vote, and I bet they'd say. <laughs> you ship your products to Russia? Is there such possibility? Oh, it like doesn't even give you enough time to read it and it disappears. That's so frustrating. The official website. I don't... Yeah, we do ship to Russia. She's cracking the whip. What's a boss? What is boss? She's the boss. See? 
Everyone. Eh, it's debatable. <laughs> she's a boss, but she's not the boss. I'm the she's boss. like, she's Where cool, bosses? but I'm the boss. Yeah, our children are the bosses, really. It's true. It, it is, that is weird when you think about it. Like, how much they determine when and where we work. Like, the, whether or not they're napping, like, is an indicator of how much work we'll get done. Well, you work a lot more than <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, that's true. But, but if you had more time, we would get so much more done. Because she's way more efficient than me. She's much more productive. If it were all on her plate... This, this no, business it would wouldn't. be a no, billion wouldn't. dollar business. We now. just, it, we work good together. Um, Shopify is better than Square just for us personally because we run on Shopify. So our little reader goes directly, all our products from our site are directly onto that. And we just sign into our app and we can check people out and all our products are already there. And then it goes to our website and gets tracked on there. So it's Syncs just- Syncs up with the inventory too. Yeah it's, so. all, yeah, it's all synced up. So it just works better for us. Cause we use Square and it worked really good, but we just had to add our products in before any event, so. But we still have a Square. Yeah, you're, I haven't seen any of your comments. They keep disappearing. Actually, we've been Hi from, them. is it Poland? <laughs> I can't say yeah. words. Percentage they take, okay, if you don't want to answer. Um, Shopify is just, it's the same as what they take from the store, which, help me remember, what is it? I, I don't know it's exactly, like, but you can just look up their different packages yeah, it, and it will tell you how much the, the percentages they take. And it's, that's it's why not I don't very remember much. because we've upgraded our package, so I don't remember which one we have, but. I think the basic one is oh, like three percent. Thank you. I don't know if that's. I think we are getting two point two, two. So all right, see so ya. Yeah. I think we're getting two point five now, but I think it starts out at three, doesn't it? And then it's like two point nine cents per transaction. Russian is angry and wants your wallet. <laughs> what? We, he, we probably just missed a comment. Let's see. Yeah, ask again. If if we miss it, it's gone. Like there's no way we're gonna be able to find find it going back. Yeah, YouTube does need to fix yes, it. I don't know Terry. what we need to do. It's such a pain. Did you order a wallet and we haven't shipped it yet? Or do you want to order? I think we do ship to Russia. We have multiple times, so. Ah! Did it run out? On the last wallet. On the la not the last wallet, the last stitch. <sighs> That's so frustrating. I just trying to fly too close to the sun. Thank you everyone for helping us answer. I could go get my laptop, but it's gonna die, so. Am I in your space? No. I don't think I've ever worked this close to him while he's on the sewing <laughs> machine. <laughs> yes, it's such a pain. Like uh, When I first Thank started you, learning Donnie. how to sew, I couldn't believe that that was a thing, that you had to like, just guess when your bobbin's gonna run out. Um, we don't add anything to our vintage brown to make it water resistant. That's all done at the tannery. It's the leather's actually infused with oil and wax and tallow, and it keeps it from. Uh, it it just gets the water from beating up, or it uh, causes the water to beat up and just roll right off. Cause there's so much wax in it. Where do you get your vintage brown leather look alike? I'm asking them, not you. Clay, we'll get it out to you one day. It's in the stack. A field notes journal. What was it? One of our wallets. Well, we don't have any, we haven't had any field notes on the site for a while. Yeah, Clay, I'm... I'll show you later. Oh, okay, she remembers, I don't. I'm sorry, Clay. We've been, uh, I've been waiting to redo our dies on the field notes because we've been changing it up, but I, I made a couple mistakes. The pen wasn't fitting. So anyway, I kind of gave up and had to just get back to work, but we'll get our uh, notebook wallets dialed in. Ronnie asked, how did we get into leather? Someone answered the Juki model for us. Nathan, thanks for helping us. It's so hard to keep up on the comments when they just keep disappearing and then I'm just in the screen. Thank you, Kurt. Oh, and Terry answered for us. Thank you. 
You get it from, have you ever bought from Acadia Leather? I haven't bought from them, but I'd like to. They have really nice stuff. So they got their look like vintage. Um, Ryan from Little King Goods orders from Acadia a lot, and his stuff looks good. <laughs> Paul J asked, Whitney, did you fall in love with Parker at first sight? Mrs. J asks. I, it was pretty close to first sight, but he w didn't really seem interested. So. Oh, whatever. What? <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> I let you shoot my gun. Yeah, we did go shooting on our first... It wasn't a date. It was just to hang out with a mutual friend of ours. Nathan's going to play Kim today. Thanks, Nathan. I don't, I don't need to know about Kim. I've never met Kim. <laughs> Kim T. Durr. Have any names for the new baby? Um, We have a girl name I really like. A boy name I... Two boy names I like, but we aren't sure about boy names. But if it's a girl, I'm pretty sure we have a name. We get to find out next Monday. Maybe you could do a live. After you do it like at the doctor appointment, no, not at the doctor. Let's do it. Hi, Gary from Texas. I've missed the garbage can so many times. All right, this is when it gets really <laughs> tricky. What? Is that is Pine Top Jordan? Yeah, <laughs> he said if he lets you shoot his gun, then he likes you. Yeah, well, that true. must have been true because look where we are now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I ran out of thread on the bobbin um, on the last stitch, so I actually just unpicked the whole stitch. And I'm going to re-stitch it, but I have to make sure that the needle goes into the exact same holes that I already punched. So it's really tricky, but it is possible. This was something that I was really like uh, hesitant to do when I first started sewing. I was like, is that even possible? Can it be done? Well, it can. It just, you just have to go much slower and uh, like take it easy. But it's much better than ending on a non-backstitched <laughs> stitch, if that makes sense. Sarah, I'm reading the comments. What? Everyone's saying about... <laughs> gun and then someone says truth and then <laughs> that's a normal date here in Arkansas shooting and fishing I've never gone fishing like real fishing besides like a trout farm which is ironic because you live on a river yeah <laughs> and Mark said you shot his gun that's love at first sight <laughs> so true which wood is the best edge slicker just the one from Tandy's awesome it's really affordable it's sitting right there oh I'll be seeing. Are you asking what type of wood or like what? What wood is this? I don't know. It's probably just pine or something soft, but. Um, the leather now is vegetable tan leather. It's the buck brown color. Yeah, this is harness leather from Wicked and Craig. All right, I gotta wind a bobbin. We only have our um, vintage brown color um, in the oil tan right now. gonna be loud? No, it'll be fine. Other than the squeak. Coco Bolo, is that what this is called? Uh-oh. <laughs> How did that happen? Never seen that happen before. My thread cone just fell right off the stand. That must have been a wild bobbin winding going down. Okay, you can go, can't you? Do I need to wind this all the way up? No, let's see if it'll just kind of pull itself up. Wait, You gotta make sure it doesn't get caught on those bolts. How did that happen? That's weird. I gotta check on the babies. There it is. Um, what was that question? There was something. It said I was Coco Bolo. Oh, yeah, Coco Bolo is, or Coco Bolo is really good word wood for slicking. All right, I can't talk. I'll see you guys later. Bye. It said oak is all I've ever been able to buy. Oak? Yeah. I wonder if that's what this is. I don't know. I've never known. Get it from Tandy though, and this does everything it's needed to do. How big are your bobbins? Hello, mm -hmm. from, hello from Italy. Hello, that big. <laughs> is that the only It's not size? like a harness stitcher where like the cowboys and cobras come with really big bobbins, but it's because you're using really thick thread, so. 
69 or 92 weight thread on these la still last pretty long. Terry, we mostly use veg tan. We used to use a lot more oil tan, but now we only have our vintage brown color right now. I can't reach, my arm's too short. You can reach. I'm sorry, my arm is in the way. Okay. Hold on. A good slicker should be made of beech or boxwood, which reacts very well with leather. Thank you for your comment. Uh-oh. My computer died? I'm gonna get the comments going. It's dead. Really want, want that you know in Russia. I'm glad you're watching from Russia. And thank you for your nice comments. A gift of good honey, and I don't know what that word is. Um, for us, when we were dating, Park would dye some of his own leather, and it just became a really messy process and added another step. So we leave the dyeing to, at this time, to Wicked and Craig. Right? Yeah. I just like their color, too. It's yeah, they have good colors. There's really no reason to hand dye it when it comes beautiful. Sorry, I'm hurrying and checking on the babies, making sure they're still asleep. Yeah, we're good. I think the only benefit to dyeing would be that you can just buy one type of leather. So you can buy it in bulk. You just buy natural veg and good to go. But I just really like the colors that Wicked and Craig can get. Like their russet, you can't get that with dye. It's beautiful. But if you like to dye your own, go yeah, for it. That's, that's awesome. It's cool. Hello from Moore, Oklahoma. First time I've gotten to catch your live stream. I'm glad you're on. Cool. Welcome, Joshua. M-Class bobbin. Regular machine is a Type 15 bobbin. Cool. Thanks, Shane. Is it more expensive? What? And what were you he's guys the, talking He's about? the one that asked about the leather being already dyed. Oh, no. Well, it just depends. I think natural tooling and carving might be a little bit less, but you're also getting different, like, tanning type... Different, different tanning processes. There's a bug on your stream. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like carving and tooling is different type of leather than harness. So that's probably what you're paying for as opposed to the color. Look, this we just found this on the thread. <laughs> <laughs> the 53 should be available. Park's been doing small batches of everything. So they should maybe have a couple by Black Friday. Not, There won't be a ton, so if you want one, just watch um, the Black Friday sale and stuff. <laughs> I wish I could speak. I am scared to what? read some of these comments because <laughs> it went away. I can't sound them out very good <laughs> when I'm on camera. Mountain bugs love leather, apparently. Yeah. I think so. Literally happens to me every day at the shop. Mountain. Oh yeah, that's funny. Man, Jordan, we got a lot in common. Where, where in the mountains do you live, by the way? I figured because of the name of your business, you were in the mountains. Do you want me to leave? No, I like it when you're here. It's boring when it's just me. You should have done my makeup today. <clears throat> Antebellum. Yeah, that says what that says. What does that say? Yeah, it's like a tricky yet. way of writing antebellum. I wish I could remember what my said. Nevada, Nevada City. Nevada City, cool. In the Sierra oh, that's cool. Mountains. That's awesome. Sierra Nevada Mountains. Okay. Josh, are you one of the ones that was going to start vlogging? I can't remember. I feel like I remember you saying that. If it is, I've I created a Facebook group called Maker Vloggery, hashtag Maker Vloggery. There's only two of us in there. Oh yeah, I invited her. <laughs> I haven't like put in the the uh, cover thing or like any of the terms and conditions and the rules and all that kind of stuff yet. So I, I only added her for now. But I'm gonna get that all together and then I'm gonna add everyone that wants to be a part of that. It's basically for anyone who either is currently vlogging as a maker or someone who would 
potentially be interested in it. Um, and then we'll just like share, you know, links to our videos and, and talk about cameras we use and how we can be better at what we do and we can all share. And If you want to be a part. Oh, threading my needle and I'm not us, even done. Let us know. Winding. I there's put there's one picture on there. It's the Part. cover photo, but it's just because it's the only one I had on my phone. Josh says he's been wanting to start making videos. I sent you an email on your website about joining. Oh, cool, Josh. I'll get I'll get to you on that, and I'll definitely add you. We're, like, um, way behind oh, on man. emails. My email is so bad. It's, like, it's stressing me out, honestly, because it's just all I can do to, like... Do I focus on like building product and, and making orders or do I just spend all day answering emails? Does anyone want? Oh, uh, Paul's going to bed. It's always late whenever we live stream for him. Uh, You're a great team. Good night, Paul. Good night. It's crazy it's three here. Yeah. If you want to be our customer service person, <laughs> let us know because we need one really bad. Yeah. Really close to the Are they just not showing up again? No, I think they're just not they coming to it now. Yeah. Cool. Well, maybe we'll wrap this up. The vlog thing is hard. I have two videos almost done that should have been posted by now, but I had major computer issues and haven't been able to. Haven't been able to getting my new one today. Hopefully. Oh, good luck. Cool. It's really hard. He has issues with his computer or the phone or the oh, camera like every, every day. day yeah it's tough it's, it's, it's gonna, i'm just gonna get my business up and running no worries i understand i got 25 wallets 40 wristbands 10 zippo pouches to make in the next two to three weeks i understand yeah oh that's wow that's well, cool you got the, quite the workload that's awesome there. um speaking of uh technical issues i really wanted to start live streaming with my DSLR or with not with my mirrorless Sony a7 but apparently my computer's not strong enough to handle it I've only got the dual core processor you got to have four to live stream I thought it was my camera was the issue but I just I was I was doing everything I can I was in the right matching frame rates it'll stop uh, matching frame rates like everything was should have been good to go. I just couldn't get it to work. So I gotta get a new computer or just upgrade my processor, but. He always wants new something. New camera. I really, I really wouldn't want to change anything unless I had to when it comes to computer stuff. I like to just keep things straight forward. It was outdated, needed an upgrade anyways. Couldn't handle video at all. Yeah, video is just so hoggy. It'll just take over your hard drive. Um, you should get a, you're probably doing this already, but we have external hard drives and um, we just edit from that and I don't store anything on my computer anymore. So it doesn't slow my computer down at all. I just store it all on the hard drives, keep your computer clean. Or what you can do is just edit like a few videos at a time and then transfer them over to your hard drive. Um, that way you don't have to actually have your hard drive in your computer while you're editing, but that helped us a lot. Is that group going to be only leather craft makers or just me? Yeah, just makers in general. Anyone. Anyone that's like craftsmen, artisans, working with your hands and building a business around it. That's what it's going to be for. Do you make something else? Red Beard Joe. Oh, man. What? Unwound a bunch. I'll go, can I accept people in there? Yeah. But I'll just know, accept. none of the, none of the like rules, terms and conditions, photos, nothing's there yet. I literally just created the name late last night before I went to bed. Gary said, our bobbin size is a size M. Cool, thanks Gary. N. That's good to know. We'll have lots of questions on that. How do I accept? I've never had to buy a bobbin for this machine. It came with like 10 of them, so I was just like, Never had to even look that up. I should have, did I make you an admin? Are you an admin already? Yeah, I like the leather and heavy canvas look too. You also upcycle old yacht sails. That's awesome. It's really cool. 
Have you ever sewn canvas? No, but you could definitely do it with this machine. I don't think you made me an admin because I can't add Jordan who just tried to. You make coin rings? That's awesome. And wood rings? Cool. It's awesome. The Facebook name was Maker Vloggery. With the hashtag. With the hashtag Maker Vloggery. But I just searched, well, maybe because I was just in it, but it looks like Ooh, that. <laughs> We do ship to Singapore. I actually just sent something out last week to Singapore. Liberty Graphic, just go search um, hashtag maker blog, uh, vloggery. On, vloggery with a V. Yeah, I said it weird. Vloggery on Facebook. And um, Park will make me an admin and I'll go add you guys. You can just request to join. Um, shipping, it depends on what you're getting. Um, but a wallet, I think, is 22 to ship there. Nick, do you have like a Facebook or Instagram or something showing? That's awesome. Wish you could post pictures on here. Well, actually, that would probably be bad. <laughs> As long as Ron Jeremy is in the <laughs> stream. Yeah, Park made um, the Facebook group um, last night or this morning. And he ha we haven't done anything in it yet. So you'll just be added and then Park will start doing his thing in there. Yeah, hashtag maker vloggery. It's pulling up for me, but I don't know if I've just been in there before. So, is it private? Oh, it is private. Yeah, sorry, it's private. The only way to to be to be added in is to have someone send you an invite. So we're gonna just send us an email or a DM or something, and any request that I see, I'll send you an invite over a link. Yeah, sorry, I I could pull it up, but just had to filter by groups. Huh. Oh, cool. Okay. But it probably won't let you um, join it. Well, you can add and then we approve. Oh, okay. <laughs> this stuff, I don't know. It's over my head. At least it comes up when you search it. So a lot of you, if, you're, if you can't pull it up, do what Parker said. And just send us an email or something. What's up, Keith? I'm curious. Um, it said I was able to... Send a request to join. Okay, yeah, so that's, that, it looks like that's probably what will happen. You can send a request and I can approve it or not. But what I'm gonna do is I wanna set it up in the future to have, if you've ever done this with groups, you, you, it usually sends you through a series of questions. And so I wanna make sure that like everyone that's in the group is somebody that's genuinely interested in creating video content, specifically vlogging for their maker business. So it's gonna be a really tight niche if you're, Within that bubble, then you're a shoe in. It'll be, you know, that's that's what the community's for. Um, I just I want to like keep it really tight and um, very specific to that to that specific world because it's kind of a new thing. Like this is something that's just not really out there yet. So well, and then it, if it's more closed like that, then you'll get good information. More concentrated, yeah, like more valuable information from everybody. Valuable. We'll all be able to kind of share what we do and how we do it. It'll be really cool. Um, who, I'm curious, what's your name? Impact Guns. I've met a few of you guys over there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, man, it's been a while since I've been over there, though. Trader Nell, I'm glad you could make it. This is the first live I've ever made, too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Keith, welcome. Any thoughts on the Cobra Class 20 machine? Yeah, I love that machine. I mean, as far as I know, I've never actually seen it in person. Um, oh, Jordan. Okay, cool. I didn't know you worked at Impact Guns. We're friends on Facebook now. Oh, yeah. That's why That's why you could find it. That's why you could find our group because you were that's friends with Parker, why. I think. Yeah. 
That's cool, man. Uh, yeah, I, I love your work. Um, his email address is parker at stockandbarrelco.com. It's at the, is it on our, the bottom of the website? Um, I'll be I don't know if my Parker one is. I think it's like a support email. We see the support ones too. We just don't get to them as fast. All right, I'm moving on from the machine. I'm gonna go burnish. Let's bring it over there. Yeah. Wanna come with me? Yeah. Good morning, wow. It's 5.15, wow, you're up early. I don't even wake up that early with the kids. Sorry, I'm making my tripod shorter so I can put you on the workbench. You shake it so much. <laughs> Just gotta make it quick. Just rip it off like a bandaid. <laughs> Sorry, making you all sick. Done! All right. Um, I have a lot of burnishing to do. Yeah, so I can send out some problems. Good morning from Singapore. Such a cute couple. <laughs> Mostly me. It comes up Thank so long as you filter things. groups. As someone else said, couldn't find it at first till I did that. Okay, cool. Oh. Um, once I get this all set up, I'm gonna be pushing it a lot more. We'll, I'll you know, get really familiar with it. I'll actually be like putting links out so you can find it. So don't stress about it. If you can't find it now, we'll get you in there. Anyone who really wants to be a part of it and you know, it fits what you're doing, then we'll make sure you're in there. Don't stress about it. I do videos for screen printing mostly. I don't make any leather videos. I'll start making some leather patches for hats. That's cool. That is cool. Way cool. Yeah, this is not specific to leather craft. In fact, I would love it if there were a lot more makers involved, not just leather stuff. <laughs> it just but. said one, but I can't reach now. Yeah, see, this is why I wanted to do the, uh, use my Sony as our webcam, because then I can just, it, the, it, the comments show up a lot easier on desktop than it does on, the, on mobile. Sorry, this is awkward. <clears throat> my computer died, so I'm going to turn awesome. it back Thank over. That's awesome, thank you. I think we are craftsmen should share so that the art won't die. Oh. I can't read the names very good, but you guys, thank you. Miss Scoom. A lot of artisans seem to hold their cards tightly to their chest and are unwilling to share. If you reach out, your vlog is a game changer. Park, when he was looking up, he learned everything from YouTube, but it was really hard finding any specific leather videos or anything to kind of help him grow the business. So he kind of wanted to be that mm -hmm. resource for people. <laughs> Sorry, it's really weird. I'm, I'm putting the comments up right here. Okay. So. Another fellow Russian. We got a lot of Russian friends on today. Also engaged in this craft and very glad they Where are the comments? Thank you. You guys are all so nice. I'm trying to get comments down here so I'm not awkwardly. Oh right there in front it is of the right camera. there. Yeah. We both did grow up in Utah. Park was actually born down in Utah County, but I was, I've was i always lived up Ogden area. Most of my life has been in the Ogden area though. What did Gary say? I'm starting a tutorial for my business. I make sport fencing swords. Oh, cool, wow, man. That's, that's a unique cool. craft, I would imagine. Cottonwood High, High School. Is that Salt Lake? Is that yeah, Cottonwood County? Heights, that's cool. Cottonwood High School. Huh. We both went to Weber Small High. Small world. And we were actually there at the same time. He was a senior and I was a um, sophomore. But we never saw each other or talked to each other. And our little sisters were best friends, so it's really weird. We didn't actually meet through my sisters, the, our sisters. We didn't meet through them, though. It was really weird. I blame them. We could have yeah. been together much earlier. <laughs> that probably wouldn't have been good. <laughs> Um, we, he's never tried making his own clicker dies, neither have I, but he mostly does all that stuff. Oh, uh, Harry, Harry Rogers on YouTube has a really cool video about him making his That's own clicker die. He said he what? watched a video this weekend about how to make them. I wonder if that was it. Oh yeah, it probably was. 
I've never seen that done though. That was a really unique process. I still don't think I would care to do them myself though because it would be really hard to get them really accurate. And um, our, the, the company we source it through does a really good job so it just takes a load off my workflow or my workload. We actually weren't high school sweethearts. We didn't meet until you were 20. Three or 21. 22. No, 21. Oh, okay. And I was 19. Miss Pris is all over. Don't forget what? to smack that. Like yeah, button. thanks Miss Pris. We have done a couple private label projects, but we typically just don't have enough time for them right now. Well, it's also hard to find them. Um, I've never made a big effort to like look for them and to do any kind of like outbound sales, like trying to make that happen. But it's always a good business decision. Anytime you can get bulk orders and all you have to do is, you know, put a unique logo on it, it's it's a super um it's a it's a green light for sure. I just did my very first leather patch hat, had to post to my Facebook, want to check out your channel. Kind of shows in the background. I'm gonna look That's it up cool. right now. Yeah, look it up. Don't yell at me. Look it up! <laughs> We need at least 10 of us bringing our craft to the table and build a dream business. 10 million. <laughs> that would be cool. Okay, I'm looking it up. I'm not just zoning it so out. anti-social. Is it a video? Oh yeah, there it is. Hey, there's my arms. <laughs> <laughs> that looks awesome. I like that That's patch. a cool patch really cool what kind of leather did you use for that it looks pretty heavy duty is that like 10 ounce leather looks good it's awesome how do you determine which craft show or fair you go to we actually don't do a lot of shows just because it's a lot more work than Parker likes to focus you can do, how do you say it? You can do a lot more work. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I think they probably are really good, but I've just always felt like the amount of work I put into to like getting set up and going to a show, you know, with travel time and expenses and all that kind of stuff, I could put that same amount of work and effort into selling something online and maybe having better results. That's just how I've always felt about it. But I love shows like we've, the few that we've gone to, we've always just met really cool people and yeah, had you like. You get to meet really cool people, and that's probably the best part. And we've had some like really long lasting relationships from people that we met just within a couple minutes at a show. And they aren't, they aren't, you do sell things and it's a good time and you just get to get out and it's good to not just always be in the shop or at home. But that we are only capable of doing open to consumer shows. We don't do like the retailer type stuff because we are direct to consumer. So we don't have a lot of opportunities to do it like Magic or like any of those big ones in Vegas. We just, we couldn't do it because we're not working with wholesalers or retailers. Why don't I keep reading it up here, but we got it down here. Nick, that one Nick said, what proportion of your work is done by your chosen supplier and how much in the workshop? Um, he, our, our, um, manufacturer does bigger batches for us. So like when we need a hundred or a couple hundred of something, he'll, he'll do it. And so I would say that just because of numbers, he's doing a lot more than us. Um, you know, we have him doing, you know, hundred to a couple hundred a month. And then I'm just trying to fill in the gaps with like the things that are out of stock. I just, I try and make like five to 10 to get in there. Well, he has a but, full team to help him and yeah. it's just parked out here. I haven't learned to stitch on the machine yet. I used to, will you push that? Oh, I gotta plug it in. I used to hand stitch and I do most of the hand stitching and Park did everything else, but he learned. We had a baby right when we did our Kickstarter and got the sewing machine. And so he started uh, machine stitching and so I still haven't learned just from just because of the babies and we haven't had time so I forgot the question <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I would say the but majority of the work is done through our partner, uh, Waterbury. Just so I can see him and the kids. It doesn't look like I'm doing much though because everything on our site is out of stock. As soon as I add the five to 10 or whatever in the, in the, onto the site, they just sell out immediately. And in, in a way it's like relieving. I'm like, great, we sold everything I made. That's kind of, you know, that would be the hope in a business. But it's also frustrating because I just feel like I can't get caught up. Every time I add stock, it's gone. And I'm just like, ah, I can't, I just can't keep up. So um, it's a little bit of a conundrum. Our manufacturer is working with us and it's really cool of him. He's kind of squeezing us into some in between other orders for other customers and he's really bending over backwards for us. But, um, you know, we're just kind of learning from it as we, like this whole working with him, with Waterbury is really new to us. So I think in the future we'll, we'll have our stuff built up, you know, our stock built up long before um, the holidays. We, we waited too long. Yeah, it, it's hard to, get everything in the time you need it especially just us doing it together did um, you check the kids are they sleeping yeah they're still sleeping um do you feel like you're losing money by outsourcing compared to when you make it yourself not at all we actually um were very surprised when we started getting bids and quotes and like running the numbers um we actually have higher margins on the products that we sell through him. But just because his process is so more, so much more streamlined, um, even with his cut, or what we pay him to make the products, he's making them so much faster and so much more efficient that um, we actually save money when he makes the products for us. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, Park first started out selling on Etsy, didn't you? Yeah. And he would work with his mom and sister in the basement. And I had it, we weren't married at the time. And then he started his, our good friend Tanner um, built him a website just on, was it WordPress? It was WordPress. A WordPress Blue site. Commerce. And that was awesome and it was really good for us. And then we just, um, uh, what is it, Shopify just offered some other things that we needed at the time. So we just moved it over there about two years ago. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Wait, Pine Top Brown, is that Jordan? Yeah. Okay. Jordan said magic is the main show I do. Oh, you do magic? It's awesome. Whoa. It's great if you're doing B2B. Yeah, that's cool. I've always just seen that show from a distance. I've never actually been or know what it's like. Let's go next year. See yeah. You. Well, not to just have to go. I want to go. Just visit. We'll come yeah, see you, we'll Jordan. we'll come visit you. <laughs> we might even stay in your hotel. You got an extra bed? <laughs> we'll bring the kids, too. That'll be fun. <laughs> What's the breast best? Oh, no. Did you say breast? <laughs> <laughs> what is the best process to go about starting a Kickstarter? Um... Start building your email list right now as much as you can because you want to have a really strong launch. So you want to have a really you know, strong uh, step to launch off of. And um, so you can start running ads on Facebook you know, about the product. Whatever you're going to launch on Kickstarter, start running ads and say sign up here for when it's available. And um, just build an email list. That's probably the best thing you can do. Hype it on social media as much as you can. But you just, you want that first day to be epic. It needs to be like the, the best day of the whole campaign is the first day. And that was where we kind of went wrong is our pricing was off. We had a really strong email list of like, how many were in it? Like 15 or 20,000. And we had our social media, which was a really good kind of leaping point. But our price point was off. And so on the first day, we kind of missed out on some of those like really crucial pledges right at the beginning. And so once we changed our price point, bought the sewing machine, you know, changed our process a little bit, we dropped it down to $50 per vertical wallet and the pledges just started going through the roof, but that was a little bit late, you know, it was like halfway through the campaign. And so um, we may do one again, I'm not sure we liked it, but um, you know, we learned a lot from it. And it was thanks to the Kickstarter that we, you know, started, you know, we were able to invest in the sewing machine, a few sewing machines at the time, I've sold them since, but changed our, really changed our lives in a way. Do you, uh, would you employ someone to work in a shop? 
Um, not the way things are going right now, just because we, you know, like I, my whole plan in, in having a shop in our backyard was just to like keep things really small and simple. Um, I wanted to be able to work out here late at night and, you know, early in the day and just kind of not have to like stress too much about like having um, specific hours and things like that, too much structure. I just wanted to be able to like work at my own time. And so I don't really see the need to hire anyone just because we outsourced the production as much as possible. Like I've thought about bringing someone in just to help with these like little batches here and there as we're trying to get caught up. But as far as like a full-time employee, I don't think we'll need to. I think if we were to hire someone, it would probably be for customer service just because we're so behind on that. But and that could be done remote. Yeah, you can do it from someone's living room. The problem is it's really hard to do customer service well if you don't, if you're not like in the shop every day knowing what's going on. So that's the only caveat I see with that, but. You dismissed the last number 52. I sent it out on Friday. Oh, black but one, But there black should security. be some coming up soon. Park's doing all the buck brown right now. And I don't know what's gonna be next, buck? No. Natural? I'm, I don't know. Probably russet, actually. We have russet. Well, not um, westerns. Everyone's been asking about western verticals. I can't believe the leak. He is. Look at his face <laughs> through the bars. Uh, you're gonna get uh, a sweet. Some... Yeah, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Hooking it up. John B. Um, the Facebook group. Um, I can't remember who said it, but you have to like filter in the groups. But you just look. Up, hashtag maker vloggery and sorry I'm like talking to the computer it's really confusing um, but if you can't figure that out just send Parker an email and he'll get um, a list together and send out invites we're gonna keep it real tight just real niche this isn't just like an open thing for anyone like just people who are really interested in making content with video as a maker it's gonna be good it'll be fun to kind of like talk to everyone and hang out um, we don't do custom orders right now. We haven't really ever. Yeah, I've talked about this before. In fact, I have a video, if you go back just a few videos, I have one that's called Batch Work Versus Custom Work or something like that. I don't remember what the title is, but something along those lines. And we talked about it with a lot of you. Everyone kind of had their own input on it. And for the most part, I think that most people are on the same page that custom work just is really hard to keep uh, sustainable because it's so expensive so time-consuming um, your order queue will stack up and get really backed up if you just if you can build a you know a fleet stock of products where you just have inventory to, to uh, like she can speak for this shipping used to be a pain because we'd get an order and she would have to make the product and then ship it well now she can just pull right from the shelf it's and so have it out better. within you know a couple hours so well if I'm not sick with the baby. We use Shopify right now and Park just found a template. Where'd you find the template from Shopify? Uh, yeah, no, it was something. I found it in the Shopify marketplace, but it's some other developers that made it. Yeah, but you could just look up different templates and find a template that fits your style. And he just implemented it on our site and we just barely got a new theme the, new theme the last couple months. How did you build your email list? Well, we had a, with the help of a company called LaunchBoom, and they they uh, specialize in um, launching crowdfunding campaigns like Kickstarter. So we had them come on board. They they got to know us really well. We went to dinner with them and everything, and then they built um, some ad sets and ran Facebook ads to build our email list. So I'm not personally good at running Facebook ads. I'm trying to learn and get better the hard thing is you have to have a lot of capital to test and to see what works and what doesn't. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things that's really hard to learn because you got to have, you got to be willing to let go of a lot of money during the testing phase. But anyway, um, Rosie says, hi, what's up, Rose? Hi, Rose. Nathan Hoffman says, thank here. you. Um, by interning and teaching, do you mean teaching me the sewing machine? Hey, I need that. Sorry. <laughs> Because I'm not sure. We probably missed something. I think you were saying about the employee. Like instead of hiring an employee, hiring an intern, and we just teach them what we do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the idea of an intern. And we'll probably consider it, but things are just hectic right now. I can't even 
can barely get enough time to come out here and finish a few products, let alone figure out how to hire an intern. Well, it's hard with, it's just at our house too, so we don't wanna just have anyone just showing up, showing up at our house yeah. and at any time. Hello from Poland. Monday's looking rainy, is that here? I like rainy days, they're one of my favorites. Oh, we missed one. February. We probably won't make it next February because we have a baby due in March. So I usually have the babies early too. So maybe next August we can make it to the magic show. Well, there's one in August? Yeah. Yeah, put us down for August. Well, We're not amazing. really going to stay in your hotel. Yeah, really. we'll get our own hotel. <laughs> <laughs> that would be but a That'd hoot. be awesome. We'll stay in the same hotel though so that we can at least hang out. We'll ask for con conjoining rooms. Yeah. We'll knock on your door at five in the morning. Jordan. <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> My wife, who is an astronomer, Twitch streams her painting, astronomy inspired painting, which she sells on her joint Etsy store. Cool. I would turn, make pens, laser cut things. I'm starting to get into leather craft. That's awesome. You guys have a lot going on, a lot of cool stuff. It's awesome. In Seattle, it's looking rainy. Well, isn't it rainy a lot? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope it's rainy here too. The video on photo studio and editing was so sick. Thanks so much. I was at the shop getting new items made and anxious to try the light room. Yeah, Lightroom's awesome. Park taught me Lightroom and Lightroom's so fun. I just mostly do the kids pictures and stuff, but can oh, I, cool. my eyes are getting weird. Jordan can get us guest passes. Yeah, because I don't want to, we don't need to like come and uh, exhibit. I just want to go walk around and yeah, meet come, cool brands. and Come say hi to you. I'm inspired by your channel and the work you do in Community Focus. Thanks, Kyle. It's awesome. I think I missed one, but my eyes are being weird. This checkerboard isn't helping on them. <laughs> it's seriously making my eyes weird. Can I move this over here? For all the edge sanding you do, you should really try out the sanding block Crimson Hides has. I just got mine last week and it's a game changer. Yeah. Who is it? I'll look into Crimson it. Crimson Hides. Sanding block. Okay, I gotta go get my baby. You gonna bring him out? Yeah. The majority of my sanding, I actually, so I'm kind of getting this down. I've been trying different things, but the majority of my sanding is done on this now. Like if there's some serious unevenness going, is that a word? I'm going with it. Um, if there's like some big level drops and stuff like that, I get it completely flat on that machine with uh, 120 grit. And so that's the majority of the sanding gets done right there. And then I come back with 320 and um, this is just like really light sanding. Like I'm, I'm just barely touching it with this and smoothing it out. So, um, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely look into that sanding block. That sounds cool. But if it seems like I'm doing a ton of sanding, I'm really not spending too much time just doing this. Most of it's done on that burnisher right there. Glassy. These edges, they look really good right before paint. Um, because I'm, I'm doing most of the initial sanding on that, the edges will darken just a little bit um, because of the heat. If I was trying to avoid that, I would just do it by hand and I could just get really clean colors. But since I'm gonna paint it anyway, I don't worry about it. But the, just, just water and slicking it down, I get really glassy edges. It's, it's really nice. Um, is that it? Oh. <laughs> What? Thought I was done. I hadn't. That was the first one. Felt like I'd been doing that one forever. Um. All right. I'm missing some. Wood. <laughs> Julie Brown says wood. Or wad. I don't know. Um, me and my wife are expecting our first baby in January. Finn Bradley Johnson. That's awesome. Congrats, Keith. That's really cool. What's the most time-consuming part of your business tasks on a whole? Um, 
most time consuming, it's hard to say, I don't, I'm not sure what takes the most time, but I would say the most um, kind of frustrating part is probably the admin stuff, like especially customer service, just trying to stay on top of that. Um, and like basic customer service stuff, like, hey, my, our, my shipment's not here, can you send me another tracking info, or tracking link, whatever, like that kind of stuff, I can handle pretty quickly. But um, I get a lot of questions that are just like, hey, I need to know what kind of sewing machine I should buy, or I found this one and I wanna know what you think about it. And those, those ones, like it's really tough for me, it's a real conundrum because on one hand, I would love to just sit and chat about you know, the craft and like spend lots of time just engaging with you guys and answering questions, but those take the most time away from production and from like the stuff I really need to get to, which is like you know, helping out customers' concerns. Wesley boy, what's up, buddy? What, is he holding Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that thing just keeps coming up. It's like, it was here, it was like outside in the dirt at one point, and then it found its way here in the shop, and then it was in his bedroom. The boy. <laughs> yeah, Nathan Hoffman gets it. We had um, a long time ago when we started doing the vlogs, someone was like, you shouldn't call him the boy. It's really... Uh, what was the accusation? It said it made, makes me sound like a distant father, like we don't love our son. And uh, it's funny because as a kid, that's what my parents called me was the boy, because there were two girls, one boy. I was just the boy, but it was really, it was more of an, it was like an endearing kind of thing. And um, so that's just how I hear it. I hear it as more of like, he's the boy, like he's our boy. It's not like a bad thing, but anyway, people, you know, it's all about interpretation. You hear things and then you interpret it your own way. So. A lot of times when you hear something, you need to think about, instead of just interpreting it your way, think about how it was meant to be said. Yeah, we love this boy. He's a good He's boy. He's our boy. <laughs> and he holds Jesus close to his heart. <laughs> he seriously wanted it. He was saying Jesus. So funny. <sighs> Do you want to burnish, bud? Uh-uh. I might. I... How long has this live stream been going? It's been a long time. We still have 70 people here. That's amazing. I actually just did my first show for the leather business about a week ago. I missed it. What happened? Went to Carson City, Nevada for Street Vibrations and set up the Harley, set up at the Harley dealership. Yeah, Jordan, I thought that was really cool. I saw the pictures from it. Um, I love the moto side of your work. I love how you've really like tapped into the uh, motorcycle community. And uh, it's just like really cool work. I love it. I'm curious, have you ever, um, have you been in touch with like the Salt City Builds guys? Um, like Rev, and what's Rev's brother's name? Brother's yeah. name. Um, anyway, those Salt City Builds guys are really cool. We hung out with them at their shop a while ago. No lighter. Where do you get the dyes again? National Dye? National Dye Inc., yeah. National Dye Inc., James. The, the email's in the description of this video. I put it in like the default upload info, so you'll see You'll, I, I, it should be anyway, I think it should. I don't know if Irish call him the boy. <laughs> We're not very... Well, Irish? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Where'd the burnish? Oh, give me that boy. <laughs> Do you have a good nap? You wanna help? Here, do you wanna play with the... Park's been doing leather work. Um, he started about six years ago because that's when we first started dating and that's when he first started. So we've almost been married five years in two weeks. How long did it take you to get your business off the ground? Is a Well, that's a hard, hard question to, to answer because I, I'm not even so sure we can consider it off the ground at this point. Like... It's just all we're always grinding. Things can always change. We're always trying to get better and get to the next level. So I don't know. It took a lot of years though to get to the point where we could live off of what we were making from the business. And like, you know, we're, our lives aren't like completely uh, run by financial crises. <laughs> you know, that's kind of like when you're, I got laid off and uh, it was just like, Man, we have to decide, like, do I go get some desk job, nine to five desk job that I am really miserable at, or do we make this work? And so that phase was really, really tough to get through. We had a home, we had a new baby, um, a, a mortgage, I mean, we had a mortgage, we had a new baby. It was just like, 
a tough time, but um, you know, I'm really glad that we stuck with it and we didn't give up. Teresa, she calls hers babes and buddy a lot. We call him buddy a lot. We used to call him Bubba a lot. Because of Indy, she came she up called with him, that. Yeah, she called him Bubba when she was teeny. And then I call Indy sweetie all the time, so we don't use their names a lot, I guess. Just got excited about Lethal about Who is weeks it? ago. Do you know what that means? What? What does it say? Frank. Just got excited about Lethal. I'm guessing he probably meant, meant to say leather. leather. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Me. Who is it? Will you do a proper Jesus? Bell Skyver video one day? Um, yeah, what are you looking for? I just barely did one uh, not too long ago where I talked about the benefits of having one. Maybe you're asking about like how to maintain it and sharpen it and things like that because I definitely will do that. Thank you, David. It's been a long crazy six years and we've both done it on and off but it's been awesome where do you get that camera controller remote can't find it where i have a sony dsc uh wait what a controller remote mm. Uh, I don't know. We don't. I, I don't have one. I would like one. Yeah. Um, yeah? Say hi. Hi, bud. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to have one where you can like be away from it and be able to control it from where you're at. I was just using my phone for a while because the new Sony A7 III you can control with your iPhone. <laughs> Lethal crafting. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's awesome, David. Keep up your leather work. It's so cool. Lonnie, send over some pictures. Love to see some alligator wallets. That's awesome. That's too sharp, buddy. I don't want you to play with it. You can play with this one. Thank you. You guys are all so nice. Thank you. My nickname at work is Bubba. My uncle has called me Bubba since I was born. My friends picked that up. That's awesome. I love it. Where's Bubba? Where's Bubba? You see him right there? That's Bubba. He thinks he's called Bubba. Have you done a video talking about sewing machine and making a good back tack? I just started trying machine and the back looks bad. Just the front looks good. Um, no, I haven't. I will. Park is crazy because he, we just had had Wes and he was in the shop like 12 hours a day. It was crazy. And he was learning how to use the sewing machine before he even started on the Kickstarter wallets and he'd have little things he'd be fixing. And what did you watch to learn? He just kept doing it? I'm trying to remember. I don't, uh, let's see. Well, I was learning on a harness stitcher and so I would watch a lot of Bruce Cheney because he does like all the skirting and tack stuff, like really heavy duty. Western tack. And so I was mostly learning from him, but I couldn't find anything from like, you know, somebody working on a flatbed, making like leather wallets. That was a really unique thing. And I'm sure there's people out there. I'm not saying they're not, but I just had a hard time finding it. And so that's kind of why I wanted to provide that for someone if I could. Wes, Wes, give him a big smile. <laughs> that's good. Big, big smile from your young co-host. Did you give him a smile? Say hi. Can you wave? Seeing your wife with your son on her lap reminds me of setting the leather bent with my two grandsons. That's awesome. It's, we always have these babies. Indy, we have a really, really, really old video, one of our first ones, and she was like a month or two old. She was just teeny tiny laying on the workbench. Now we have a bigger <laughs> workbench, so that would have been nice, but. She, um, yeah, you can go, you can see those videos. Go on her YouTube channel, just go all the way back. Go watch them. There's like a few Instant. right at the we beginning. We've changed so much, it's crazy. And our parks, park designs all the products and his work has changed so much in our process and it's just crazy. 
What's wrong? You guys are all so nice. How long does it take you to get real precise on your sewing machine in terms of stitching, landing the right place when not using an edge guide? Park still uses the edge guide, don't you? No, I don't. Like oh. an edge guide on a machine. Oh. I use um, like, oh, he's playing with that. I use one of those. <laughs> but no, I don't use an edge guide on a machine. Um, what was the question? How long does it take you to get real precise? <laughs> oh my gosh. Bless you. Oh, no. I don't know. It's so hard to say because I just I don't really know when the time was that I felt like I was suddenly precise. You know, it was like I feel pretty confident now, but I still make mistakes. And um, well, it's crazy. He had a lot of pressure on him, and I think he actually that actually helped him. Yeah, it's like, true. Quicker because he had a lot of pressure to get out the Kickstarter wallets and quickly and the new baby and just not being there all the time. I don't know, it was a crazy time, but I, when could you sew up a wallet for Kickstarter and some of that? Like a month after learning? Yeah, it was probably a month. But he's still learning and that's why I'm scared to try. He's a lot better and quicker but I, than I am. You would be able to learn faster though because I'd be able to show you. Like, oh, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't feel like I had anyone to show me how to do it. He's handed. Thanks, bud. Tools. Do you want to do it? Hey, you try. Oh, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> it's barely pushing. Hi, Nico oh, from Cape Town. <laughs> NFM Leather is my business name. I learned a lot from you. Your info, shortcuts, and do's and don'ts. Thanks, Parker and Kim. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, Kim? <laughs> My Her name, name's Whit. My name's Whitney. That's okay. It's probably confusing. I've been thinking about getting a machine, but I try to brand myself with the rugged handmade look. Um, but man, hand sewing so many wallets can get literally painful. Yeah, I I get that, Josh. So true. Um, but you you need to like study up some Western tack stuff because that's what really drew me to leathercraft and a lot of Western tack guys um, machine stitch, and it still looks really rugged and tough. They're using like old world harness. I think that your choice in materials is what's going to kind of paint the rugged picture as opposed to the way your stitch looks. A machine stitch can still look rugged and tough, um, yet clean and precise. So it's just, uh, sometimes you just kind of have to like, open. like there was a time where I thought there's no way I'll ever use a sewing machine. It just wasn't part of what I wanted to do. Like I wanted my life to be sitting in a workshop hand stitching away. But when it comes to like growing a business and, um, mm -hmm you know, uh, being able to kind of open up the window of, you know, or the potential of making different types of projects and, and getting better at the craft. Like, I just feel like um, when I was able to kind of open my eyes and be like, oh, maybe sewing on a machine isn't a horrible thing. No then I was able to like really change my attitude on it. I started to really love the way it looked. So anyway, it's just, it's just a personal preference thing, but. It did, I think one thing that helped Parker learn the sewing machine um, sorry, I'm going to Jordan's comment, but he said it takes time and more importantly being patient and Park's really patient, <laughs> really, really patient. And that's something I need to work on because I'm not very patient. So I think that's why I haven't wanted to dive in either. But let's see. Yeah, we follow Albane, don't we? Yeah. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was like one of the very few that was sewing leather on a machine on YouTube. Talked about how to set the point and coming to an edge. Happy Thanksgiving in Canada. Maybe we'll go get some Thanksgiving dinner in honor of you guys. <laughs> Sounds good. What size thread are you using? 92. 92. I should know that. I answer that question a lot. Indy's still sleeping. Thank you guys for your videos. Wait, I missed one. You are pumping out those edges. What pushes you to work like that? I'm guessing those guys in front of the screen. <clears throat> yeah, they're okay. Like, they're whatever. But I mostly just do it, like, because I think it makes me look really cool. <laughs> Where'd the lighter go? Does he have it? He dropped something, so probably. Can you get the lighter? Where'd the lighter go, buddy? Go, oh, right there, right there, right there. Okay, hand it to Dad, please. 
Thanks, job, buddy. Bud. Teach you how to light it later. Go get a hat. Go get a hat. How about we send out a hat to someone? That'd be cool. How are you going to choose? They have to guess something. Oh. They no, how about they up? have to share this live stream on you on yeah on YouTube. Okay, let me get a hat. A, ra you. a random person to share this live stream on their community wall. I don't know what YouTube calls it on their feed. Yeah, we can see who shares it, but we'll send you out a hat. We'll message one of you. You can get one of these. Actually, we'll send out two. We'll pick two of you. Oh, I'm feeling a little rambunctious today. Maybe we'll send out 30 of them. No, maybe no. 40, maybe 100. We don't maybe a million. That. Okay. Thank you guys for the videos. I like seeing the business related videos. They are helping me get ideas to help push my saddle making to the point of making a living for me and my family. That's awesome. I appreciate that because I feel like those videos don't get nearly as many views or clicks. And it's frustrating because that's the kind of stuff I want to make. I would love to talk about building the business around leather craft or just a craft in general, as opposed to like actual tips and tricks about leather craft. Those are the only ones that get clicks when I'm like, here's how to make a wallet or whatever. Those just like, boop, 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 just climb in views every day. And the, uh, the ones about like business and that kind of stuff just don't really get it. So, oh, Kurt shared right on. No okay. idea how to share. What? Hold on, right here. Oh. Um, Jordan from Pine Top just said he wasn't going to get a sewing machine either until spending 14 days, 14 hours a day stitching. And it got crazy because one of us was either stitching or holding the baby or it just got crazy. And they just just got to the point where we just needed to do that to grow, so. I think the fear is that all of a sudden your work is gonna lose its soul because there's an aspect of the process that's not done by hand. But the reality is so much of the process is still done by hand. Like, look, I'm still sitting here with a hand burnisher and burnishing every single edge of every wallet that goes out the door. And um, there's ways to automate all this stuff as well, but it's just, just the idea of a machine scares some people, but you don't have to because the craft is still just beautiful. It's illustrious. There's so much happening. And, and it's, it's such a beautiful process, even with the machine, in my opinion. So, um, I don't know, just a, just a thought. It, it took a while for me to kind of get to that thought process though. There was a while where I was like, I was like, oh, I'll never, <laughs> I'll never touch a sewing machine. Some of the most luxury products in the world Actually, most of the highest end luxury products of the world are done on, on a machine. You know, so to, to say that something can't be done well on a sewing machine is pretty crazy. It's kind of an art in itself. That's what I learned after I'm like, okay, once I get a machine, it'll all be automated. Basically just throw it in the mold and it'll pop right back out. But that's not how it is. Like there's still very much an art to it. Um, it takes a lot of skill, you know, kind of an artist eye to get it right. So. Uh. I think that gets overlooked a lot. I don't know if you guys watched the video of Park talking about black t-shirts, but I went on and found Wes some just black t-shirts because he spills so much. So now he's in the black t-shirt club. <laughs> he's got a bunch of them. <laughs> um, but Joshua, I went and looked at your leather work. It's awesome. That's really cool. It's cool what you're doing. Keep it up. Um, where do you get your leather from? I want to answer it. I want to, see, I want to hear you answer it. Oh, okay, look at him. <laughs> your, hat's, your hat's coming pre-worn. My little boy. Um, Wicked and Craig, we get most of our leather from Kylie. Yep. And we get um, some one-off projects from District. Yeah, District Leather Supply is where we get like one-off you know, just like hide you want to try. Um, or like one off wallet um, colors. That, yeah, that we want to try. I still get That's a lot of leather thing. from Tandy as well. I just love Tandy. I don't know. They, they've got a lot of good stuff. I think they sometimes get a bad rap, but have you looked at their leather um, offering lately? They have some good stuff. And then also our vintage brown uh, oil tan hide. I, I, I'll say. Hide hats. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You, you think I'm, I'm not... 
Well, you didn't mention it stuff. before. I thought you didn't know. I was know. going to, but I wasn't there yet. Yeah. How many of your products do you make? Okay. Do you make some mistakes often with your projects? I make 10. Out of 10, I make about seven good ones. What do you do? Actually, no, I don't make any mistakes. So. <laughs> That's not true. We have a. No, I one do make batch. mistakes. I make them all the time. In fact, no, I'm just I didn't want to say it. It's not that I was avo avoiding it, but um, we were talking about something else. But one of these car holders, I'm really frustrated about it, but it's the one where I, I had to re, I had to unpick it and I started sewing it again and the uh, needle got off track just like, just by a little bit, but now there's two holes for every stitch and it just, it doesn't float for me. I won't let it go that way. So that's really frustrating. That's pretty rare. I haven't done that very often, but... Mistakes happen. They do happen. You just, you have to allow for it in like, in the budget in your mind. You just got to say like, it's going to happen and not get too stressed out when it does. But that's what the, the, the idea of doing batches helps with that a little bit. It's like, if you're going to make 10 wallets and one of them's bad, you're like, okay, well, that's all right. If you're making one product for one customer, it's like a one-off thing. And it's, you know, this is like the custom mindset. Someone wants one product and you mess up on it, you get a lot more more frustrated because you got to start from scratch you got to do it again so anyway um, batch work helps a little bit with that I think batch work actually helps you avoid mistakes as well because you get into a rhythm if you have to sew one you know section of a wallet but you have to do it ten different times you get really good at it by you know as you do it more so I don't know just a thought thank you all for sharing we'll pick two winners and send you out a hat um, I don't know how to share from a phone either right now because I don't have my nut, but yeah, the baby was on the sewing machine. Luckily it was off. It was just the light that's on. So from your phone at the bottom right corner, there's three dots. And if you hit that, there's a share link. So that should do it. Share it. And you hit the button that says create a post. That's how you share it on YouTube. Miss Scoom, I'm glad, um, Jordan can help you out because... We haven't ever tried making a watch strap before. We've definitely thought about it, and we have our good friends at Arvo. We've talked with them about making some watch straps, but we just haven't been able to make any yet. Yeah. You have six sewing machines and love them all. The oldest is from 1914. That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Where's Indy? This channel has been invaluable for decisions that I'm making right now. That's awesome. You guys really are too nice. Yeah, it's thank really, you so really much. That awesome. feedback means a lot. It really does. I, I get really uh, discouraged every now and then. Wit tells me I stress too much about it, but like some videos get like 250,000 views and then others, most like the majority of these vlogs that I do every day are only getting like one to 2,000. And so I get really discouraged. I'm like, man, am I not making what people want? Am I not... Um, you know, giving the right information? Am I not titling them right? Like, I don't know. I'm always trying to think about how to make it better. But when I get the feedback like this from you guys, it's just so rewarding. It just makes me feel like, okay, I think, I feel like we're doing the right thing. We just got to keep it up. Thank you, Mac the dog. That's awesome. You are too nice. Joshua does his shopping at Pandy. Cool. Kurt said, run out of bobbin thread. Oh, bless, bless you, you. Wes. Uh-oh, what are you doing? I just God need bless to the Wes. Okay, just tell me when Indy wakes up. Hi, my name is Nadia. I don't know if this question has been asked before. What is the best way to store finished product? We actually don't have the best way to store yet. We always have different amounts of inventory, and it's we actually store our bags in our basement, so... They don't get all dirty out here. They're all wrapped up and they're fine, but just for like sake of water getting in here or anything, we keep the bags inside and up high off in our shelves. The way but, I would like to do it, we should probably set this up soon, but I'd like to have some kind of drawer system where you pull out a drawer and there's rows of wallets in yeah. each drawer, like a different style, different color. Mm -hmm. Because the number one thing when you're storing leather is to make sure that it's out of the sunlight. Because if it's not, then you get... You get little tan lines, like <laughs> these have been sitting here for a long time. They're not even available on our site anymore.
But even if they were, if someone ordered this, I wouldn't send it out yeah, like this because of that tan. But if, if somebody wants these, I've got like three of these and we'll sell them at a discount. But if you want one. Yeah, so like the interior is really light colored and then it kind of gets darker on the outside. Like, look at that. That's just because they've just been sitting in our shop and we should have had it like wrapped up in a bag or I don't know. If you have know. any good ideas, send us some yeah, too. Let me we're, know. we're always, I love to organize and that's one thing with the business. It's been really hard because we always have different sized hardware or different sized um, tools or whatnot. So it's hard to find stuff that fits everything and works for what we need. So we're just getting things as we go. But if you want one, email me at Whitney at Stock and Barrel Co. How much? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to. But just email me if you want one. I'll send you over the pricing. And if you want one, I'll send you a big. What? Get one. Where is he? Right behind you. Uh, get him off that. <laughs> hey, Working on the bell chair, Move your chair over here. That's not safety first, Wes. Here. That's safety second or Come third. Here. But if you want one, email me. And let's trade a hat. Uh, Who's got a hat? Jordan, send us over um, your address and we'll email you back our, ours. Jordan Porritt or Jordan Pine, Top. Pine Topper? Oh, oh, cool. Is that? Hat for hat, yeah. Um, hold on, you missed Oh, this sorry. Is a, I'm scrolling too fast. Are you using the Pro Edge burnisher for your Dremel to burnish your edges? Or if so, how do you look? I don't use our Dremel anymore. Um, I, I'm... Like I was saying before, I do the initial sanding of the products on that with a 150 grit. And then I also have some 150 here if I need to like fix anything. And then I always end it um, with 320 just to get like a really smooth surface. And then the, the final pass would be like with canvas. And in between that, I'm, I'm slicking it down with water. Hey buddy, come here, I'm still here. You get nervous? You want some Oreos? My daughter calls those EO EOs. Come here. I'll open them for you. I don't know where to put you. Too many sharp objects here. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Too much stuff. He's mad about it. Uh, I store my leather goods in acid free tissue paper to keep them from scratching next to each other and also avoids color bleeding. That's, that's smart, really smart, I like that. You are making a difference, don't stop. Thank you, Miss Goon, that means a lot. I appreciate that. That was cool, thank you. Take the numbers out of it and visualize a thousand people standing in front of you. It, yeah, it's true, that is a significant amount of people. Um, how are you doing your cutouts for batch work? I use uh, clicker die, or clicker dies with our clicker press, the Mighty Wonder from from uh, Weaver. Hi, sweetie. I thought we left you. <laughs> oh, we didn't leave you. We're just out here. I had my camera pulled up, but she must have gotten out of bed really fast. Gosh, I ran so fast in there. I'm so tired. Which one did you answer last? Um, the one about taking the numbers out of it. There's a thousand. Wait, right? Is that the last one? Oh, no, it was Miss Scooms. Okay. From up here, though. Up there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I answered that one, James Wipe Blair. Wipe on your hands. I mean, wipe on your hands. Good pants. evening from Toledo, Ohio. Cool, what's up, Tobias? Thank you for all the videos. I enjoy the day-to-day. -day. Keep the awesome job. It's hard to make video content every day, and it takes a lot of time. It does, Smuzzler. I totally get it. It's rough, but it's really rewarding. We love it. Good luck at work. Liberty Graph Designs. We should know your real name. Oh, is he going back to work? Yep. Yeah, what's your name? Kurt says the Dremel seems to burn the leather. Yeah, that's true. You gotta, you need slower speeds. We used that's... the Dremel a lot when we had laser cut edges though, so kind of, I, yeah, didn't, that's, I didn't notice that. That's exactly right. Yeah, we when we were doing laser cut, the, the edges already charred and burned, so we didn't really worry about that. But if you're trying to do a wallet where you want the color to stay the same without burning it, then um, you just want lower speeds, lighter pressure, lower friction. Okay, can you share your Oreos? But seriously, like this thing, this is one of the first things I bought the day I walked into Tandy for my first time. Looking for leather tools, I bought one of those and uh, 
the fact that I still use it on such a regular basis is really cool to me. Share with the people on the camera. Are you giving that to me? <laughs> I thought he was giving it to me and then he pulled back. I want some Oreos too. Wes will share. He's really good at sharing. Huh, Wes? You need to make yourself a leather apron. <laughs> you do. <laughs> This one was given to me by our friends at Pointer Brand, um, LC King. Have you guys heard of that? So this one's special to me. I love it. I use it a lot. I thought about putting some leather straps on it, though, and just keeping the canvas. <laughs> we do need There's some branded uniforms. It. That would be really good. Some what? Branded uniforms. Like uh, jumpsuits. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, pinstripe, like this. Pinstripe jumpsuits and With train conductor hats. <laughs> that really would be good. Okay, I wish I knew how to say your name, babe. You help me out. Where? Right here, where the mouth Abu. Is. I don't know. Abu Bakr. I hey, wish... everyone, hit the like button. 73 watching and only 30 likes. Yeah, That's thank so you nice. for that. You guys are so awesome. Kim, we're doing awesome. How are you doing? Oh, is Kim here? Yeah, yeah. Kim's is here. Kim? We were wondering Kim, where you were. I haven't met you. Park was saying. I said, Kim's always on. here. I don't know where she is. A little bummed out. Parker has Kim. a good video on how slower burnish techniques are better. I tried it and totally agree. Awesome. Thanks, yeah, Kurt. I do. Thank you, Kurt. I forgot about that. When you make videos every day, you tend to forget what you've actually made. Like from Star Trek. Is that what they wear in their suits? <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you drooling on the leather? Jeff said I got a leather okay? sewing machine recently. I've been fighting it. Can't figure out how to neatly backstitch. Oh, uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, a lot of our backstitching we just do by hand. Yeah, you do. That's a good question. Do you have a reducer? Because that'll slow it way down. So you just, it goes so slow that you can just literally thread the needle as it's moving and mm -hmm. you can just put it right into the holes that you need it to go. You have to kind of get out of the fabric mindset of sewing. It's not like with sewing, you can just kind of brrrr, and you're just running through your stitches. But when you're sewing leather, you take every single stitch individually and very carefully, and you make sure that that needle's going right where you want it to. Um, so hopefully that helps. And hey, from London. That's awesome. You live in London. Oh, I just went way down. Sorry. Um, me either, Beth. The backside bunches up. The front is nice. Are you, what, what weight of leather are you using? I'm curious. If it's bunching up, it might be like upholstery grade stuff. Your tension might be too tight. Your uh, machine might be too heavy duty for the material you're using. Cowboy leather shoe repair. Nice to see the whole family in the shop. This doesn't happen very often because <laughs> usually I run out as soon as Park's working. Nope, don't touch. Babe, he has leather hands. I mean, Oreo hands. <laughs> leather hands. Oreo, Oreo hands, hands on the leather. On the leather. Eating chocolate now to join in on the Oreo monster. Yeah. You should see his face. <laughs> Slide in, show him your face, your chocolate face. He's actually not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Holding his hands out. You messy? He wants you to clean them. That's how he asks. Okay. I'll get you a paper towel. Yeah, can do it very slowly. I find that it gathers on the back. Is that due to tension? Okay. Is the thread gathering or the material? I think it's hard. It's so hard to know if I'm not actually seeing what's going on. But if it's the thread, oh, hold on, buddy, stay there. I don't know. If it's the thread, it might just be tension. It might be, um, it's actually so hard to say. There were a lot of things that were happening when I started. <laughs> yeah, gosh. Uh, there are a lot of things that I was struggling with when I started that I'm just not now. And I don't feel like I ever had like a real defined solution for it, but it's just like the more I did it, the, the less the problems were coming up. And so I remember on my CB341, it would jam Every single time I tried to use it, it was just jamming up every single time. I don't know why I did, I did it the same way I worked on my 3200, 
But um, eventually, I just got to a point where it wasn't jamming anymore, and I had it down. So I don't know. What are you doing? <laughs> this boy's Practice and weird. patience, I think. Is, yeah. <laughs> hey, John. Welcome from the UK. <laughs> Leslie, you're Kim, not you helping. are so nice. I haven't got to meet you. I've never been on a live stream. You've been on a live Yes. Beth said she makes thick stuff, um, guitar straps and so forth. Oh, she's cool. the one that has the bunching on the back. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe send me a video of it and I can see if I can see what's going on. But I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Right? I have no clue. And Kim, thanks for answering questions, Beth. I don't know where the like button is on a phone. Mine is a Cobra 18 with about eight ounces total leather. My furniture. 138 thread and 22 needle brittle. He's having um, gathering to his outdoors. Yeah, I'm just not sure what, what you mean by gathering. I don't know, you guys will have to, if you want, maybe send me like a quick video over email. Just be like, here's what's happening, I don't know. It's so hard to tell if I know I can help you, but I, I really don't have all the answers. I think a lot of people <laughs> assume that I'm expert with the sewing machine. I'm really not. I'm learning a lot. So well, he if didn't it's something, start, sorry. No, so if it's something I can help with, I definitely will. But. He didn't start using a sewing machine until like March of 2017 or 2017. Yeah. So not, Crazy. not too long. Um, let's see. Advantage of water-based glue versus co contact cement. Um, advantage number one would be the, the uh, oh. advantage for the water base would be because you're not, um, the, the toxic smell <laughs> isn't consuming your brain. Like the, no. I swear I was getting, losing some brain cells for a while, but. I also like that it doesn't seem to dry out as fast as like barge does because I just keep it in this little bottle and I keep thinking I'm going to have to uh, clean it out and put new stuff in, but it's still good. It's still liquid in there. So uh, barge never did that. It would dry up like just within a couple days if I didn't keep swapping it out. Cool. Figured I would try and ask looking forward to leather workers side find answers. Beth, seriously, that's hilarious. What was Beth? Fun fact, they aren't called cowboy machines over here because cowboys associated with a half-done job in the UK. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's really funny because in our, like, for our culture, like, cowboy is such a, it's, it's like a, it's, it's a really positive term, at least in my, in my eyes. Um, Park's working on, um, right now he's, burnishing some key pieces for orders we have to send out and he also was working on these card holders he stitched these up and these are for some orders too i'm just gonna getting ready to paint wait what is that one? Oh What's yeah that? i'm getting ready to paint the edges on them but i was gonna burnish these first i don't think i'm gonna burnish these though or i mean paint the edges on these yeah i'm just gonna burnish these ones the facebook leather community group it's Actually, a vlog maker vlog group. Wait, I'm, Where's the I'm, I'm comment up on here. The right here. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not a leather community specifically, because there actually are a lot of leather groups out there on Facebook. I didn't really feel the need to start a new one of those, but this is more about using video to um, build your brand as a maker. So vlogging or just like video on Instagram, things like that. Um, really specific to vlogging though. I think we're gonna kind of keep it with that theme because um, I think it's something that's really helped our business and I would love to see other makers doing it. And I think it would be cool to just kind of uh, create a community around the idea of that. So vlogging is everywhere. Like people are doing it all over the place. You know, just family vloggers, uh, other types of businesses are vlogging a lot. Like Moment is like one of my favorite businesses that vlog. But there's not a lot of makers that are doing daily vlogs or just vlogging in general. So I just, I think it would be so cool to push that and see other people doing it and then and then be able to kind of tap in together and, and communicate with each other, help each other out on it. And um, the camera bag, Pablo, is 
still in the works. It will probably be out next year, middle to the end of next year. We have some other things we're actually working on right now. Um, and it's... Look. The timing was just really unfortunate because I, I that's been my number one, like, uh, I, that's been the one thing I really, really wanted to get to work on. But just because of the, you know, Christmas season coming up, we got to build stock. Um, our manufacturer was kind of getting backed up with other customers. And so I just felt like I got to buckle down and just get work done. Um, build up some inventory so hopefully we can man. start work on it next year um when it slows down a little bit not the holiday season at the beginning of the year i but really wanted to have it done before christmas time and it just wasn't in the cards i uh it's funny because there are so many different prototypes and a lot of different like aspects of it but i'd prefer not to show anything yet just because Nothing is even close to what the end, the finished product's gonna be, so I just don't want anyone to think that it's going to be what it's not. So anyway, I've shown little sneak peeks like on Instagram and stuff, but um, there's gonna be a lot of changes to the final thing. It's actually cool seeing a lot of women on here because I always think everyone that follows Stock and Barrel in any way is male, just because a lot of the Instagram people that follow well, I say follow park, but stock and barrel are seem to be male. So it's really cool to see Yeah. All of you guys here. There's quite a few actually. It's cool. It's really cool. But yeah, send us over an email, Beth. I wish we could help you out more. We stopped hitting me with the Barbie. This <laughs> is like mad at you. Cause... But Nathan, thank you for that. If we haven't have you ever looked up high tech sewing channel? Yeah. Yeah, that, um, yeah, Ryan O'Neill is the one who does the videos for most of those, and that's who I bought my cowboy machines from. So I watched a lot of his, his videos before I bought my machine. Builders that do a bad job are called cowboy builders. <laughs> that's funny. What? Moments vlogs are killer. I love watching Caleb and Niles. Oh, cool. Who watches them? Um, Jordan. Jordan. Fine top brand. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. That's just one of those like, I didn't even, I, mean, I haven't like mentioned it much just because I figured not there weren't a lot of you that would also know who they were, but that's, that's cool. Nadia, thank you for your nice comment. Park Muck does most of the <laughs> video content. I want to be a part of it more, but I've been so sick this pregnancy. I'm finally okay today, but I want to be helping him out more because he does a really good job. Do you want to show them the prototype of the bag? The camera bag? Yeah. No, I, I that's that? what I was saying. Okay, I, I didn't listen, sorry. Here's an edge paint question. I've heard some pros say that sealing your edge with water or token I don't know, and burnishing before you edge paint is actually prevents the edge paint from soaking in the tooth. Huh, I don't know. I haven't had that experience. Um, I, I like, I don't use token so maybe token does that, but I just use water. And, um, is he drinking that oil? Hey, did you put that in your mouth? No. It's all over his hand. Well, we need to have it more <laughs> baby proof This place is here. not baby proof. What was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, so I, I haven't found that the paint um, handles the leather any differently. What I don't like is that if you don't burnish it or slick it down, then it, the, the paint goes on really bumpy and all the fibers poke through and it's just, it's a horrible finish. So I prefer to slick it down first, but that's just, just me. I don't know. Um, I haven't experienced any paint like peeling off or anything like that. It always holds really tight. I use Vernice edge paint. So good, good question though. I love thinking about these things. I never even thought of that. So it's definitely worth like putting some like testing it out. Um, there are a lot of girls out there that kick my butt in leather crafting. It's so true. I mean, women are just better at us than most things. I'm just gonna put it out there. Wit is way better at these things, at all, just about everything than me. But the, the difference is, like we kind of established the roles early on in our relationship. Like she was gonna be, you know, kind of the, uh, you know, taking care of her home and the kids and, 
I, I was going to take on the role of creating a living, you know, bringing in our income. Um, I don't ever, I don't believe that that should be assigned to any specific gender. That's just how we decided to establish the roles. And so if she had more time, if it weren't for her, like taking care of the kids as much as she does and doing as much for the family and the home and everything, um, this business would probably be in a whole different place just because she's so efficient and so good at what she does. But, um, maybe we need to consider swapping roles. <laughs> I'll be a stay at home daddy and she'll just come out here and kick my butt. We tried that. Yeah, we did try it for a little bit, but not, it wasn't me staying home though. I was working, I was working, but she started doing stock and barrel full time and just like filling the orders. She did a really good job. I'm just, Park's a lot more creative than me and he's able to get content, obviously the video content and photos. It's him and he, he teaches me everything I know. Andy, can you help me? Cowboy Leather one? and Shoe Repair says I'm technically challenged when it comes to blogging, but I don't believe that. I've seen some videos you've done where you actually like show your work on Instagram and stuff. Keep it up, man. I think it's awesome. What gives you inspiration for new projects? You. You. He designs everything, <laughs> so it's really hard because I'm the worst at drawing anything out. So I'll have things in my mind of what I would like. And I don't know how to portray it to him unless I like see a bag. I'm like, I want something similar to this. But we haven't we haven't done a lot of women's stuff yet. And that's actually what we want to get a couple things out. And But what inspires you? Where'd that paint roller or the edge? Oh, there it is. We, we like really minimal looking things for us to carry personally. So we just kind of do what we would use. Yeah. Rugged, minimal. There are a lot of people that will tell you that's not the way to run a business. You shouldn't just be making things that you like. It should be making things that the market needs, that there's a hole for. And so there's a little bit of a mix of that. Like the reason I've wanted to make a camera bag for so long is because the, the, the uh, leather camera bag world is so slim. There's a few of them. There's a few like Ona bags make some good ones. There's a few like independent makers like me that are making some, but I want to like really fill the gap with like uh, just a heavy duty um, Western tax style, like vegetable tanned camera bag that's really functional and actually um, easy to use and, and actually like easy to apply to your life. And so that doesn't exist right now that I know of and I want to fill that hole. So a part of it is like for the market, a part of it is because we've just been wanting that for ourselves. So it's just kind of a mix of both. Thanks, Kim. I didn't know you did, did leather or not, but that's, she doesn't do leather, but she enjoys our channel, she said. How many coats of edge paint do you use? I just do one. As long as you, man, I got that all over my Can fingers. You show? Um, I just do one. As long as you get the surface really smooth and flat, you should be good doing one. Um, as far as like multiple, products in a batch like I do if I was just gonna do one product at a time and I was really putting my time into each one I might go through and like sand it with some really fine sandpaper and uh, maybe do it a couple times but I'm always really happy with just that first coat as long as you're starting with a really flat clean surface man I got messy with this one it started dripping all over my fingers I'm usually pretty keep this pretty uh, high and tight me in a shadow from right there. Oh. Can you dilute gum trag? Yeah. In water maybe? Definitely. I got a few bottles that last time I was in the US. I'm running out and can't get it in my country. I don't know what that is. What gum trag? Yeah. It's just like a burnishing agent like tokenol or like yeah. saddle soap. It's a lot like saddle soap actually. You can go finer in sandpaper grit for every application you finish off with beeswax. Try it. You might love it, Parker. I, I don't doubt that. I really believe that I would. But for like batch production where we're doing, you know, anywhere from like 10 to 100 wallets at a time, 
it uh, makes a lot of sense to be able to finish off with just one coat and be able to move on. Um, edges are so tricky. It's like the more, I mean, you can always do more with edges. You can spend more time burnishing more coats of paint or more, uh, you know, applications of gum trag or saddle stuff. Like there's always more you can do, but it's always a goal of mine to try and find a good system to, to like put out a good quality, clean product, but be able to do it efficiently and, and, somewhat quickly um tobias park um does draw out his pattern his ideas first he designs them first by drawing them out and then he doesn't he you never really just started cutting leather he would do patterns out of poster board um for a long time but then now he draws them up and then puts them onto illustrator gets them printed on paper or um, whatever just from a local print shop and then cuts them out and then goes from there to see what he needs to change or whatnot right yep um and that's why <laughs> i haven't done anything i tried i made a couple little bags just a little purse for indy when she was little and like little woman's bags like a long long time ago and it's so hard to get your own patterns and especially for for me it's really hard for me Ma'am, don't sell yourself short. I can't remember what I was saying. What were you selling yourself short on? <laughs> Good night, Derek. I just can't believe it's bedtime <laughs> for people. We probably do need to wrap this up, though, because I have to start the vlog for today. We got to... Yeah, it's 4.30. I, I do this every time. I think, man, like, I get so pumped about the vlog that I edited and posted and uploaded, and I start promoting it in social media. And then all of a sudden I'm like done and I'm like, take a breather. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to start the video for today that has to go up tomorrow. And uh, it's, it's overwhelming, but it's really fun and challenging. And, uh, but yeah, tomorrow's, the video that's gonna be posted tomorrow is gonna be all about um, using video to promote your maker brand. So it's gonna kind of tie into the Maker Vloggery Facebook group. We'll have it, a link to it and kind of tie it in, but it'll be good. So. Thank you guys so much for joining on this. It really means a lot to us. And all the nice things you guys are saying, gosh, slays why, us. Why your wife don't help you? <laughs> yeah, why aren't you helping? Come on. <laughs> I am no, helping. She, I'm reading all the comments. She does more than I do. Most of it. Like, she uh, usually is just slammed with shipping and everything and answering emails. And so she's, she's helping me with comments right now. Um, I wish we could say your name. Spell it out for us or how you announce the Abu. Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. Abu Kur. Abu Kur. I go. hope we're saying it even close, but she said he said she's doing a more hectic job. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> uh, one one you day I'll those, be sweetie. one day I'll be helping more, and Perk will teach me how to sew, and I can help out. She knows more. most of the craft, like. She's an amazing leather craftsman. She doesn't give herself enough credit, but she does a lot. The only thing she hasn't been able to like, you haven't been able to like learn yet is sewing on a machine. I've so. never painted edges either. The newer techniques that we've been doing recently, I haven't ever like learned. And it's just, just because I'm in the house with the kids and we just haven't had the time. Even nap time isn't long enough to learn a sewing machine. So, and I've been sick, so anyway. Jump on the sewing machine, Whitney. I'll jump on right now, but nothing will look good. Look forward to watching the video tomorrow. Okay, yeah, we better start stop? filming it. Okay, Park's gonna Th start filming. Thank you guys for being here. Love hanging out with you. We'll go check the shared and watch for a mess. I don't know, is the messaging work on here? Yeah. We'll message you, so just watch your message um, today, tomorrow, and we'll pick two people to send a hat to. These hats. So if you share it, we'll see, and you'll be entered to, we'll just send one of those out, two. You know what? Do um, I think you can end it from here. Woo, I'm about to get, see that stop streaming button? I'm about to get paint on my computer, that was dangerous. Kay. Bye guys. Bye guys, love you, bye, bye, see you, okay, bye.